dear students today we are going to discuss about disease and immunity uh, after watching this lecture you would be able to know about pathogen uh, transmissible disease uh, body defense system and how to control spread of disease and you should know about uh, types of immunity active immunity and passive immunity and process of vaccination and autoimmune disease right now first of all we will discuss about pathogen pathogen is actually disease causing organism any microorganism that enter to your body and cause disease that is called pathogen we have different types of pathogen these are different groups of pathogen virus bacteria protoplasm and fungi virus those disease that caused by virus is called viral disease so these are viral disease like influenza common cold poliomyelitis and which polio virus a check on nervous system and that can lead to paralysis aids is caused by hiv virus that weak our immune system right and your body is unable to protect himself from disease uh, bacteria is another group of pathogen those disease that caused by bacteria are called bacterial disease like cholera it's caused by bacteria called vibrio cholera uh, and this the most important symptom or uh, symptom of cholera is diarrhea right and uh, syphilis it is sexually transmitted disease caused by bacteria trypanosoma pallidum uh, tuberculosis Uh, it's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis it's the name of bacteria that cause tuberculosis it's a infection of lung a important a important symptom of this is severe coughing uh okay and uh, high temperature uh, sweating okay now tetanus it's uh, also called lock jaw it's caused by a bacteria called class um clostridium tetani uh, and you know in this stiffness of muscle happen uh protoplast like it's also called protozoan uh, those disease that caused by protozoan are malaria amoebic dysentery malaria is a disease caused by protozoan called plasmodium right and the symptom of malaria is like high temperature uh, uh, headache nausea vomit nausea especially and uh, these are the symptom of malaria amoebic dysentery uh, it's caused by anta amoeba that is protozoan and the most important symptom of dysentery is uh, diarrhea and abdominal pain okay and fungi is another group of pathogen that cause that cause fungal disease like it leads foot and ringworm both are skin disease okay now let's move towards infectious disease uh, we have two types of disease remember one is infectious another is non infectious infectious are those disease that caused by pathogen and infectious disease can transfer from one person to another person because it's caused by a pathogen it caused by a microorganism while the non infectious disease that cannot transfer from one person to another person that may be caused the cause of non infectious disease may be genetical like cancer that cannot transfer from one person to another person right or that may be certain nutritional deficiency uh, nutritional deficiency means like uh, 
for example, rackets, right? So it's caused by vitamin D deficiency. Uh, scurvy caused by vitamin C deficiency. So these diseases cannot transfer, just like not like infectious. Infectious during lifetime, they can transfer from one person to another person, but that cannot transfer, right? Now, uh, infectious disease can be transmitted, direct transmission or indirect transmission. These are the way through which infectious disease can transfer. Like the first one is direct contact or direct transmission. Physical contact between infected person and susceptible host. They can transfer directly through physical contact. If that physical contact is just a uh, contact of skin touching, touching someone's skin having infection, uh, sexual contact, or contact with aura secretion, or contact with body lesion, body fluid, or in blood. For example, Transmission of HIV virus, you know, HIV virus cause AIDS and this virus transfer directly through unprotected, unprotected sex with infected partner or sharing of HIV contaminated needle, right? Or sharing of needle with infected person, a person having that HIV and you share like he used a uh, a needle and then you use that again for injection so that can be transferred other uh, risk factors of hiv is transmission from infected mother to fetus through placenta hiv virus having the ability to cross the placenta to cross to cross that barrier right and it can also transfer through blood transfusion for person and blood transfusion from infected person it can transfer Okay, now indirect contact when there is no direct human to human contact, but can transfer by contaminated food. If the food having a pathogen and you, you, you eat that food through contaminated water, contaminated water through vector. For example, vector is any organism. Remember, a vector is any organism that can transfer the disease causing agent from one person to another person. For example, come to our malaria. I told you already malaria is a protozoan disease. And the name of that protozoa is plasmodium. So this plasmodium can transfer from one infected person to another through a vector called mosquito. So here mosquito is a vector that is classy that is transferring the disease causing agent from one person to another person, right? Now, uh, this is another example, uh, typhoid fever. It's caused by Salmonella typhi. It's the name of, um, this is the name of bacteria. And this is uh, usually present in uh, uh, contaminated water, so it can, uh, it can transfer to a person and through contaminated water and that can cause typhoid fever, right? Another one, now body defense system. Uh, there are different body defense system that protect us from disease. Like the first one is mechanical barrier, second is chemical and third one is cellular barrier. Okay, so mechanical barrier is your intact skin. Your skin protects you from the entry of pathogen. But intact skin, if skin damage, like injured, so through that place, the pathogen can enter. So here I will use the word intact skin. Nostril hair, these hair also try pathogen. Um, blood cloth, when injury happen, you know, after some, after bleeding, that place the blood stop, right? And make a cloth. So that cloth, one thing, it stop the blood, but another, it's also help to protect your body from anti pathogen. So it actually stop the entry of pathogen to your body, right? And cilia, these are certain hair-like hair -like projection that is present in your respiratory tract. So when it beat, it is pushing, the mucus, you know, it's pushing the mucus out from your uh, respiratory system. 
dead mucus strep pathogen. So the, while this cilia, this, this, this cilia, this cilia, this hair-like projection, it helps to protect your body from pathogen, right? And now chemical barrier, it's in the form of stomach acid producing HCL, stomach is producing HCL, and that HCL provide acidic environment to pathogen, and by that acidity, it can, uh, it can uh, damage, uh, it can, uh, means degradate or uh, it can stop the pathogen growth. Lysozyme, this is special enzyme present in your saliva, present in your tear, uh, present in your sweat, right? So this lysozyme actually uh, break bacteria cell wall. So it stopped the bacterial growth by uh, breaking the bacteria cell wall. Mucus, it's a mucus produced by special cell called goblet cells. That mucus also trap are uh, it uh, it's it uh, he it trap the pathogen it trap just pathogen and protect your body from that uh, cells there are different cells in your body like lymphocytes and phagocytes right uh, actually lymphocyte and phagocytes are types of white blood cell this cell lymphocyte <clears throat> produce glycoprotein molecule called antibodies. Antibodies actually um, protect you from pathogen, like this antibody can, uh, can adhere with pathogen and stop the movement of pathogen, stop the pathogen to, uh, to stop the entry of pathogen to the cell. Pegocytes. These cells engulf the pathogen. Okay, so we will discuss it now in detail, pagocytosis. Now, how to control spread of disease? The first is food hygiene. Food hygiene means keeping our food clean and pathogen free. So how we will do this, like hand washing before eating, Worker of futile should wear uniform that cover their clothes and hair. Uh, don't let food in open environment. Okay. And keep the food in fridge. Is the low temperature slow down growth of microorganism? And keep away the raw meat from other food because raw meat may contain pathogen. Cook the food well at high temperature. Is high temperature can kill microbes. Personal hygiene. Personal hygiene, the another one we have personal hygiene. Uh, personal hygiene means keeping body clean through following different ways, like how we will clean our body. Uh, wash hands with soap, take bath daily, and brushing teeth daily okay uh, waste disposal uh, you know waste disposal is actually solid waste material in the form of bottle can plastic bags syringe even waste food this thing may not thrown to open space why because they can contaminate our air. So these waste should need to be collected and landfill site. Okay, some of the microorganisms can decompose some of the waste and that produce methane gas and methane can use as a biofuel. Okay, this is important of waste disposal. Another one we have, sewage treatment. Sewage is actually waste liquid that come out from houses, industries, toilets, kitchen. So sewage water can turn many chemicals, toxic chemical, pathogens. So sewage water should be treated properly, okay? 
through water filtration plant, it should be treated properly, uh, right, to make it pathogen free. Now, another one we have immune system. Immune system is body defense system that provides resistance to infection. White blood cells play an important role in immune system. So our body defense system here is immune system. And white blood cells play an important role in that. Right? White blood cells, we have two types, pagocyte and lymphocyte. Pagocyte, first look at here, the structure of pagocyte, you know, pagocytic cell contain looped nucleus. You can see loop. A loop nucleus, right? And granulated cytoplasm. The function of pagocytes is to engulf the pathogen. That process is called pagocytosis. While lymphocyte function is to, this is the shape of lymphocyte, right? You can see it here, big nuclei. It's contain a big nuclei, but it is not loop. Here it is loop and, and pagocyte. There are different pagocytes. The example, one example of pagocyte is natropel. So this is natropel having loop nuclei, right? And granulated cytoplasm. And this one, uh, lymphocyte having no loop nuclei. Remember the function of lymphocyte is to produce antibodies. T lympho, there are two types of lymphocyte, T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte. T lymphocyte activate B lymphocyte and B lymphocyte will produce antibodies. That antibodies actually increase the process of pagocytosis or it trap microorganism, protect the entry of microorganism or pathogen to a cell. Okay, now let's study the process of pagocytosis in detail. You know, pagocytosis is actually the engulfing of pathogen by pagocytic cell. Okay, like for example, it is a pagocytic cell and this is pathogen. So this pagocytic cell make a finger-like projection here eh? and now it is surrounding this pathogen. So here in this case, later on this pathogen now inside the pagocytic cell and it is covered by this vacuole, it is covered by this vacuole, this membrane, sorry, it is covered by this membrane and that make just like a vacuole, this sac-like structure. This is the membrane of this pagocytic cell. So inside this sac-like structure, so it is what it is pathogen. Now pathogen plus the sac-like structure, it is called pagosome. It is called what? Pagosome. Now inside this pagocytic cell, there is a Another or there is an organelle called lysosome and lysosome contain digestive enzyme. So this pegosome, okay, and this lysosome both will fuse. When both fuse, this will become like this chick. This one, eh? This. So when both fuse, that is called pegolysosome. Pegolysosome. And with the help of that digestive enzyme, it will degrade it that pathogen inside that vacuole. And the soluble substance will diffuse from the vacuole into the pagocytic cytoplasm. Now the, solid, the soluble substance are actually the product of uh, that pathogen that degraded by the enzyme that is present in the lysosome, right? Sorry, the enzyme that is present in lysosome. They did and lysosome, there are digestive enzymes. So this is the process of pagocytosis. Another one, uh, lymphocytes. Uh, lymphocytes actually, these are special cells that produce antibodies. Now, how they are produced, so what is the function of antibodies? Actually, antibodies lock on the antigen leading to direct destruction of pathogen. Are marking a pathogen for the destruction by pagocytes. These antibodies can directly destroy the pathogen by activating certain protein and that protein 
will destroy this pathogen or this antibodies lock this antigen and then stimulate phagocytic cells and that phagocytic cell will engulf the pathogen it means antibodies can increase the process of phagocytosis okay each pathogen has its own antigen so antigen is actually the part of pathogen that having the ability to stimulate our immune system antigen is the part of pathogen that can detect by our immune system each antigen having specific shape and for that specific shape a specific antibodies will produce in our body like for example against mycobacterium tuberculosis antibodies against mycobacterium tuberculosis will produce that antibodies will not work against hiv because these antibodies are specific against that bacteria is it clear now let's see how this lymphocyte work first i will tell you generally remember for example it is a, a beta uh, it is a b lymphocyte i told you two types of lymphocyte we have b lymphocyte and t lymphocyte if antigen enter or pathogen enter to your body so this b lymphocyte will detect that by special receptor when it detect it right so this b lymphocyte having also the ability to engulf that antigen and when it engulf it so it will present it by special receptor car mhc2 receptor to so mhc2 receptor it will present to t lymphocyte when t lymphocyte detect this antigen by special receptor right called t cell receptor and cd4 receptor by this receptor they will identify that antigen okay this t lymphocyte will secrete certain chemical called cytokines when the cytokines produce so cytokines will actually stimulate this b cell so simply keep it in your mind that antigen enter to our body detect by b lymphocyte and for the activation of an activation of b lymphocyte t lymphocyte also play important role so t lymphocyte actually activate b lymphocyte but that b lymphocyte should be a specific b lymphocyte because this b lymphocyte will produce specific antibodies against this specific antigen okay now this b lymphocyte will start mitotic division and that will divide so two b lymphocyte will form one and another remember mitosis mitosis happen both are both cells will be similar to each other that's why both are called what clones identical copy but one of these two will start secreting antibodies directly at that time while another one having antibodies but that will not secreting you can see it here this way. so this is called what memory cell right while the one that is secreting directly that is called plasma cell so plasma cell producing antibodies while memory cell remain for a long time in your body if remember if same antigen or same pathogen came again come again in future to your body so this memory cell will directly start dividing they will start to be divide to form more memory cell okay and plasma cell and they will start secretion of antibodies directly against that pathogen so that's why secondary infection take less time to recover why because already memory cell develop in your body from the primary infection and memory cell then take less time to produce antibody so your body respond very quickly as compared to primary infection is compared to when first time anti that antigen came to your body 
right? Now, this antibodies can bind directly to the pathogen when it and it can when it uh, uh, sorry for example this is antibodies right so it's this antibody can directly uh, bind to the pathogen and all this antibody can cover this pathogen from all the site and trap this pathogen from the moment okay one thing Another thing, this antibodies can also stimulate special protein and that protein can destroy this pathogen. Another mechanism. Third mechanism, this antibody can also stimulate pagocytic cell, pagocytosis. Okay, and activate pagocytic cell or increase the process. Simply, I will tell you that this antibody increase process of pagocytosis. Make it easier it strap the pathogen, then it make it means it make it easier for this pagocytic cell to engulf. So these are the two three mechanisms that I to tell you now about the how the antibodies work. Okay. Now, hope it is clear to all. Right. Uh, this is memory cells. Memory cell remain circulating in body for a long time if the same antigen is reintroduced a few weeks or month later memory cells divide rapidly and develop into plasma cell last for the, these remain in the body for a long time okay now another topic is types of immunity okay we have two types of immunity, active immunity and passive immunity. Remember, in active immunity, antigen or pathogen will enter to your body and your immune system will expose to that antigen directly. While in passive immunity, your immune system is not exposing to pathogen directly. But antibodies develop in another organism and you receive from another organism only antibodies. But in active immunity, your immune system is exposing. So in your body, antibodies will also produce by specific lymphocyte and memory cells will also produce. Okay, that's why if memory cell is producing active immunity remain for a long time in your body while passive immunity remain for a short time in your body because no memory cells are produced. Now active immunity two types natural and artificial. Natural active immunity in which in any pathogen enter to your body antibodies develop in response to infection infection happen to a person naturally so if for example a bacteria enter to your body and cause a disease in your body but it also stimulate your immune system and your body produce antibodies and memory cells against that bacteria so that is natural while artificial is we you through vaccination, artificial through vaccination. Now, what is vaccine? Vaccine is actually weak pathogen, or killed pathogen, or antigenic part of that pathogen. Okay, that inject to your body, or that administered to your body, and when it enter to your body, it's it's weak. It cannot cause disease but can stimulate your immune system. If it can stimulate your immune system, so in your body, memory cells and antibodies can develop. If memory cell develop, that memory cell, if the actual form of that pathogen come uh, at, enter to your body, so that memory cell already you develop through vaccine. So your body will respond quickly and your body will cover from that infection quickly, right? This type of immunity that you develop by vaccine is called artificial and active immunity. Now come to our passive immunity. I told you here only antibodies you are taking from another. Now if antibodies develop naturally 
and you receive that. It's called natural passive immunity. For example, your antibodies received from mother. A small baby is receiving antibodies from mother through breast milk. So the antibodies actually develop naturally in mother body, but now a baby is receiving, baby is receiving that. So it is natural passive. While artificial passive immunity, antibodies received for, from a medicine means it, the antibodies develop in laboratory or industry, okay? And that is injected to, injected to a person. So that is called artificial passive immunity, okay? These we discussed already, okay? Actual immunity and passive immunity. You can just study the slide, okay? Now, uh, vaccination we also discussed. It's just definition of vaccine, okay? And administration of vaccine is called vaccination. Okay, you can study the slide, okay? We just study right now, okay? Now come to world autoimmune disease. Some diseases are caused by immune, you know, the function of immune system is to protect you from disease. But sometimes, because, because some unknown reason, your, your immune system start attack, attacking its own body cells. That is called autoimmune disease. For example, let's see. This is pancreas, right? This pancreas contain beta cell. And the function of that beta cell is to produce what? Insulin. Insulin, right? And this insulin actually control, this insulin actually control glucose level. If glucose level is increasing, this insulin is decreasing that. Now, what happen and diabetes type one? Some antibodies develop in the body, person body, and that start attacking the beta cell of pancreas. Means certain antibodies develop and that start destroying beta cell, their own beta cell. And when it start destroying beta cells, so insulin will decrease in the body or no enough insulin will produce in the body. So thus glucose level will remain high in the body. This condition is called type one diabetes. Why? And type one diabetes is autoimmune disease. Why? Because immune system, our own immune system start attacking our own body cells. They recognize our own bo uh, body cell is a foreign, right? So this sort of disease, uh, this sort of disease called autoimmune disease, right? I think it's clear to all, okay? If anyone have question, they can ask, okay? So this is the end of our lecture. Thank you so much.